On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have the results from the View Striped Bass Tournament from the Great South Bay. Another tag has been retrieved from the 2020 Striped Bass Study. Matthew Broderick answers a fishing question from one of our regular viewers and reports from all around the island by anglers like you. All here at the new Fisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. In case you missed it earlier in the week, last Sunday, Captain Matt Roth of Atlantic Beach put Matt Diamond on this monster blackfish caught south of Jones Inlet. The fish was weighed in at Bay Park Fishing Station in Oceanside by Mark Keller. The tog weighed in at 17.3 pounds. Then after being weighed in, the 20 plus year old fish was released unharmed. A true sportsman. Speaking of tog, News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin has a look at this weekend's weather for all of you out there looking for that big blackfish. Rich? All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, anglers, let's check the weekend forecast and see what we got going on here. It looks like another very good weekend overall. We'll start things out with the water temps, uh, still 50s in the sound. We got some 60s to the south. And on Saturday, it looks good right now. I don't see much in the way of any big wind. Hopefully, this forecast holds up. A general two to four or less inside of about 10 miles. So the local areas, the beaches, the reefs should be good. Start to get more of a roll Saturday night going into Sunday. Kind of a swell type of deal developing with easterly swells uh, going into Sunday, but still inshore. Doesn't look too bad, not too choppy. Again, it's more of a roll coming in. And the future cast shows light and variable winds. Uh, for most of Saturday, we don't see much in the way of any big stuff. Maybe going around the south a little bit going into Saturday night and Sunday. So it could be a little bit of a chop. Maybe a bit of an easterly roll, but you know, right now, as it looks, uh, the wind's not too bad. Overall, if the forecast holds up, the weekend should be sensational for uh, the ocean sound. Looks pretty good. High tides afternoon from the North Shore, uh, late morning, midday on the South Shore, and temperature's good too, and not too cold. We got 60s for highs both Saturday and Sunday. We're looking very, very good. So Tim, right now looks terrific. Hopefully it holds up. Uh, enjoy, get out and get some fish. Have a great weekend. Tim, back to you. Remember, be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before heading out on the water. Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro was at the View Restaurant in Oakdale for the weigh-in and the final results. Fred? Hi, Tim. And we're here at the View Restaurant in Oakdale where the 30th Annual Riverview Striped Bass Tournament took place. Uh, formerly the Riverview, now the View Striped Bass Tournament. And we had Mike Quintel on the Sasquatch take first place with a 14.8 pounder. Jake Albanese on the hot dog had a 12.4 pounder. And Jake Kuhn on the Sitster had a 10.8 pounder. Remember, all fish had to fall within the 28 to 35 inch uh, required slot limit. Uh, there were no bluefish entered, so that $500 prize was raffled off. And $1,000 was donated to send a kid fishing uh, through the tournament. Uh, only 17 boats braved the weather, not surprising considering there were wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour in the morning. Uh, 46 anglers participated, and uh, only one boat uh, did get outside. Uh, most anglers stayed in the bay, and there was some good fishing in the bay. I know uh, I spoke to Jake Albanese, they had over 20 fish uh, casting plugs inside the bay, including the second place fish. And they also released over the slot fish. Uh, Again, uh, 30th annual tournament. They've donated lots of money to send the kid fishing over the years, thanks to the participants, and uh, you know, kudos to them for that. I have Matt Broderick, our managing editor here, and he's going to be interviewing the winning angler. Hey, I'm here with Mike Quintel, the winner of the Riverview Fishing Tournament this year. Uh, it was a little nasty out there. How were the conditions out there, Mike? It was not good. It was not nice at all. Uh, blowing really hard. Started out in the uh, bay fishing all, all morning, left around 12, decided to go out the inlet, stayed out there for about two hours, caught a bunch of little cookie cutter fish, then we got the one up top on the Ron Z, exactly 35 inches, 14.8 pounds, and got first place with it. Awesome, Mike. One fish and done it, and you got the money for it. Yep. Congrats, and uh, hopefully we see you again next year Thank down you. here. No problem. From Montauk, we have Captain Timothy O'Rourke. Thanks, Tim. Well, a short and sweet report this week from Montauk. As everyone knows, it's fall. The only downside is the weather. If you can get out, when you can get out, it's really good. Otherwise, uh, the weather's keeping a lot of guys at the dock. So in regards to that, there's not a whole lot of an offshore report this week. But locally, everybody's doing good on blackfish and sea bass. Still putting consistent catches on the dock. Paulie Bruno from the Elizabeth II sent me a nice report today. Some really nice pictures of that. 
light tackle, striped bass fishing, everything's going really good. There's a lot of good reports of guys catching nice fish in the beach from Bridgehampton to Montauk Point. So all the quality bass are starting to work their way around the point. A um, couple good trips today, uh, a couple good trips this week, I should say. Um, on Saturday and Sunday, a lot of nice bass just off the beach, big pods of bunker. So we've been putting this hoagie paddle uh, pro tail to work. It's been working really good. As long as you're not in any blue fish, which we're just going to chew the tail up. This thing, you drop it down, you jig it up and down, you reel it, doesn't matter. It seems to be working really good uh, catching the bass. So uh, if you can check this out, I'll uh, send Tim a link and we'll put this on the website this week. Uh, the Hoagie Pro Tail has been working good, and uh, I have a picture of the fish we've been catching bass on. All right, so weather's looking great this weekend. I have a trip on the My Joyce with Kenny Haydechek this weekend, so I'll give you a full report on that. We'll be doing a mixed codfish, sea bass, and blackfish trip. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Another tag has been tracked down from the 2020 Northeast Stripe Bass Study. With all the details, we have New Jersey, Delaware Managing Editor, Jim Hutchinson. I'm down here at the end of Jersey Avenue on the Delaware Bay Shore, deep down in southern New Jersey uh, in the beautiful little remote fishing village of Fortescue. The reason I'm here is because on Election Day Tuesday, we finally got a tag return. Four months to the day that a mini PSAT device was, in, was deployed in that striped bass off of Montauk. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, pick up the November edition of the Fisherman Magazine. We have a full write-up on the Northeast striped bass study for 2020. Two tag returns have come in, Cora and Rona. They were caught end of May, early June off the Jersey Shore. That third mini PSAT device, a satellite tracking device, was deployed in a striper off of Montauk. Four months to the day later, that tag came under done just a few hundred yards off the beach here in Fortescue, New Jersey. Now since Tuesday, we've gotten a couple of other satellite updates. You know that the satellite, the Argo satellite travels around the earth. So every 24 hours, it's going to feed that tag that came undone from that striper is going to feed the Argo satellite. So we're here someplace at the end of this road, Jersey Avenue in Fortescue, someplace along the beach, maybe, maybe along the beach here in Fortescue, but along the Egg Island Wildlife Management Area, we're hoping that tag can get retrieved because there's a couple of things to consider that satellite tag for 10 days the battery continues to function and it'll keep feeding the Argo satellite but after 10 days we don't have any more information if we can get that tag back it is so chock full of information about that striped bass named Independence. It was named Independence by Fred, Mike, and Savio up off of Montauk because it was caught July 3rd. And now we'd like to know what it was doing for the last four months before it showed up here along the Delaware Bay Shore. We will have more information about the tagging results in our January 2021 edition, but I'm hoping that somebody's gonna come collect a bounty down here on the beaches of Fortescue or somewhere along the Delaware Bay Shore. $500 cash and a sweet prize package we're putting together. I'll keep you updated from the New Jersey edition if one of our New Jersey guys finds this, fit, this, this tag. But exciting news that this tag is starting to feed the Argo satellite. We'll have more information as it becomes available right here at the Fisherman Magazine and thefisherman.com. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everyone. Uh, lights out fishing. Uh, we had that blow. We had that weather came up on the moon, the fishing returned to what it had been before the weather. Um, just spectacular open beach fishing at sunset at first light during the day. Uh, just a ton of 26 to 28 inch fish. A couple of slot fish mixed in, not as much as the bite we had prior to the full moon. Um, but it, you know, it's that time of year. This is what we've all waited for all year to get on them like this at night. Bite's still been pretty good. Uh, I was able to get my, my first uh, three or four fish on a needlefish. I'd never caught on one before. I asked Matt Broderick how he used one last week. He answered my question and uh, was rewarded for putting his knowledge into use. So thanks for that, Matt. If anyone has any questions about specific lures, don't hesitate to leave a comment on our YouTube page. You can direct message myself or Matt Broderick, Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, or you can also email 
libayrat at gmail.com with any questions we'll try to get those answered for you uh when the fishing is this good it is fun to kind of go through the stuff in the bag and throw stuff normally you wouldn't when they're on the chew um i i was able to get uh another few fish on um, some soft plastics I hadn't really broken out in a while. So it's a great time of year to be out there fishing. Tog bite still going on. Um, any kind of rocky area from shore. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of shorts, but a few keepers mixed in and obviously bigger fish out on the wrecks and the reefs. Uh, if you have the numbers, you'll find them. Weather looks awesome this weekend. Get out there. This is the time of year we wait for it. So enjoy yourselves and catch them up. Thanks, Tim. Back to you. We have another question this week from Francesco Henriquez about rod choices for surf casting. And it just happens that Matt is very familiar with the subject. This week we got a viewer question in from Francisco. He wants to know the proper surf rod to use in the St. Croix series for walking the dog style bars. So he asked about the Avid Surf and the Legend Surf. I fish both these rods, so I'm familiar with both of them. And he said he's looking at for something in the 9, 10 to 10 foot 6 range. Now, personally, in my opinion, when I'm doing a walk the dog style kind of retrieve, I'm fishing the rod under my arm, which means that something in the area of a 9 foot rod would be more comfortable to fish a, um, a lure like that. Um, also, when I'm using a walk the dog style lure, I'm going to be looking for something with a moderate action. It seems to work the lure a lot better. Uh, it's more comfortable. The hook sets are a lot better as well. Um, so, Francisco, if you're looking for a rod for Walk the Dog style in the St. Croix series, try the 9-foot uh, St. Croix uh, Legend Surf in the moderate action. You won't be disappointed. If you have a question on using a specific lure or gear, Matt will do his best to answer it. Shoot me over an email at libayred at gmail.com, and we will get the question over to Matt. Kale's Family Boating Center is ready to get you out on the water. Check out a Sea Pro powered by Suzuki. New models are in stock now, but they may not last. Visit kalesfamilyboating.com for more information. From the Fire Island Inlet and Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Tim, Fire Island Report. Striped bass fishing is still excellent, both inshore and offshore. Inshore is very consistent, but with a lot of short fish, but a good number of fish in the slot size and occasionally one a little bit bigger. Uh, offshore it seems it's kind of you know one day it's good the next day it's not so it might be good for a day or two and then all of a sudden it goes lean and then there's another catch that goes on so uh, both inshore and offshore weather looks great this weekend striped bass primarily and if you can get on a good piece of structure black fishing I heard is excellent as well so a uh, good weekend coming up it looks like especially with this real nice weather report so even offshore is going to be an option this weekend uh, there's probably still tuna fish out there to be had, so I'm sure people are going to be running long as well. And uh, as the striped bass fishing is going to be great inside, so there's going to be a lot of boats on the water this weekend. That's it, Tim. Looks like a great weekend coming up. Talk to you next week. Longtime subscriber Joe Milo caught his personal best bass on the South Shore last week. He battled his 30 pound striper while on the rocks with waves crashing on him during the fight. After taking a quick photo, the 43 inch bass was quickly released safely. Then on Halloween night under the full moon, he hit the beach again and reported, and I quote, it was a full on massacre. He had mostly slot fish and then he ended the night with this 25 inch weak fish. With our fly and freshwater report, let's check in with Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Tim. Well, we did our last trip of the year. We went up to the Farmington River up in Connecticut. We met up on 684 for coffee and bagels. And it was windy and a little chilly. And everybody said it would be a great way to practice for steelheading. But by the time we got up to the Farmington, the wind was howling. And as we're rigging up, we heard a tree break down on one side of us. And then another tree in the woods fell down on the other side. And then within minutes, a big tree right in front of us crashes down. At that time, we decided it's too dangerous and we packed up and we went home. Now, unfortunately, that's what happens. You never know what's going to happen. Now, as far as fishing on Long Island, uh, there's been a lot of trout been uh, stocked. Heidi and her crew did a great job. And talking to this young fly fisherman, Michael, he was out fishing out in Massapequa. And with the help of a good friend of mine, Rick, he landed his first trout on a fly rod. So kudos to you two. And uh, as far as uh, Connecticut, fishing terrific. Now on the saltwater scene, 
I actually went out with Duck Dennis again one day, showed me around. We were fishing up tight up against the sod banks, throwing poppers. We had a great time. Uh, Dennis landed some really impressive uh, back bay bass. Great time. And what was amazing is nobody was out. We didn't see one other boat all day. It was terrific. Talking to a good friend of mine out in Montauk, Captain uh, Tim O'Rourke. He took some time and did some black fishing. He said it's been really good. This week, I'm going black fishing with Dave Flanagan. He's showing me all the tricks. I've never black fished. I'm so excited to go out and try this. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Bottom line is, there's still fishing to be had. Get off those couches. Get outside. In tight lines, everybody. Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle in Northport has the North Shore Report. Well, I don't know if anyone wants to hear a fishing report this week with all this crazy election stuff going on, but here it is. Outside from uh, Eaton's Neck, all the way down to uh, the west over by Cold Spring Harbor, to the east of Crane's Neck, it's nonstop fishing. We've got bass, we've got bluefish uh, off the beach on the boat, whether you're jigging top water, throwing shads, it's all working right now. Like I'm seeing uh, is a shift of these fish leaving the harbors, leaving the bays. So work on the outsides, look at those in between tides. That's when the action's red hot. Um, as far as blackfish go and sea bass, still got that going on. There's plenty of uh, porgy still in some of these areas. The water temps are holding, but uh, the air is getting cooler. It seems like we have a nice break from the wind, so this is your time to get out there. Wind, uh, false albacore, forget it. I, I, I don't see them right now, and that really stinks. The blackfish are really heavy on that bite still, so there's plenty of blackfish mixed in with sea bass and porgies, and uh, a lot of smiling faces out there. Hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed this week's report. And I bid you peace and tight lines. Joe Ben Savenga fished Jones Beach a few nights ago, and he said the action was red hot with mostly slot fish that he released. Bucktails worked during the daylight hours, and then he switched to the SP Minnow that did the trick at night. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you. Let's check in with Chris Ludwig. Hey, thanks, Tim. What's going on, guys? So this last week, I had some time off and was able to fish the open beach during the day, which was pretty cool. Uh, so up until about Saturday, we had fish stacked very tight to the beach. I'm talking on the beach lip is where they were sitting in the current. There were fish on the bait that were deeper out, too, but that's really not what we were hitting. They were kind of far. But what we were throwing at them were these guys here. So they're bucktails, but they're by a company called First Light Tackle in Florida. Uh, they call them snook jigs, or other guys call them flare hawks. And I'm convinced that this trip, these bass were actually, correct myself, on the multiple trips, the bass were hitting this red flare. Um, I changed it up to this hawk, and that worked as well. But once I did a different color flare, they were not touching it. Uh, moving forward, other days when the fish were on the bait, we were using a bunch of different jigs just to get some distance. I use this guy. This is a runoff Laws herring jig. Um, I'm a fan of the crippled herring, so this is basically the same, the Lord Jensen one. This one's just a smaller version, and I'm able to rock it through the wind and really land in the bait. And we did capitalize on that jig. I got the biggest fish of those trips, like 33 inches or so on it. Uh, so that worked out well. Obviously, when they were tied in, we used diamond jigs. I don't need to show you those. But the point is, each one of those lures had its place, and they all worked effectively. But to note, when the bite got tough, and this is where that red flare comes in again, when the bite got tough, the striped bass were really only turning on this thing. So if you have time, check them out. First light tackle. As always, take care, guys. Guess who was creeping while you were sleeping? That's right, Raul Ortiz, the urban angler. He and his friends, Douglas and Kevin, fished the incoming tide along the western south shore, and it was lock and load with schoolies and the occasional keeper. And as always, all the fish were released to swim again in the future. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Fred. Well, folks, Captain Mike Sentry here. Hope all is well. Let's start off with the insane striped bass catches all through the month of October heading into November. Anglers from boat and from shore have been catching large migrating bass. Most are caught with live eels, bunker spoons, mojos, and of course diamond jigs. Striped bass are abundant from the ocean side, Jersey Shore. Crunch sport fish captain, Mr. Guy, aka Mr. Cannoli, he's been putting his customers on his almost standing striped bass just about every trip, just about every day he's been going out. Also another friend of mine, Freddie from Andreas Toy Charters, 
he's been putting a hurting on this trophy striped bass. Check out some of these pictures. Another friend of mine, Mr. Matty Fish, has been catching quality bass in the Robertson Bay, fishing the structures with live eels. Folks, look, now's the time. If you wait any longer to book a trip, hop on a friend's boat. If you don't have access, money's tight, hit the shore. Live eels will work. Bunker chunks will work. These fish are hungry. They're migrating south, outer banks, North Carolina, Virginia. That's where they hang out at all winter. So they're hungry. They're looking for food. Get out there, make it happen. Incoming tide, low coming, outgoing tide, it does not matter. Just get out there, make some memories. Let's send off 2020 with a great striped bass season. So, Captain Mike Sentry, see you guys on the water. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. And remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Coastal Kayak Clash Contest and win this Old Town Autopilot Kayak worth over 4,000 bucks. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and more information. And please support our correspondents by visiting their website and local media pages. Looks like a great weekend ahead, so get out there and catch them up and see you right here next week at the all new fisherman.com.